event is obviously, it's about me, but it's also about you. It's about all these guys here holding the cameras. It's about community, it's a community event in um, Chilwell Community Valley Theatre. Okay, let me just do a couple of introductions. Obviously, I myself am Laura Walsh, hello. I'll be um, hosting tonight, tonight's event. This brings up a lot of the issues about the things that I would like us to discuss tonight. So I know through there people were quite quiet, but this is our opportunity to speak out because we've all got a voice, we've all got a mouth, and we've all got the right to use it and give our opinions. So whether you're six or 66, I want us to take this opportunity to kind of, you know, Give some, give some opinions across um, in tonight's forum and ask some questions to our panel and stuff. Okay, can anybody, can any of our young people tell me what a stereotype is? Does anybody know what a stereotype is? Can anyone guess? What do we think it is? What do you think? He's like, I don't know how to explain it. Okay, but you sort of know what it no, is. No, I don't know what it is. I just don't know how to explain it. Like, a stereotypical name for, like, a type of, I don't know. Do you think it could be described as like a label? Yeah. Do you yeah. think it's when people get labels? So do you think the youth of today get labels? Yeah. Okay, like a youth stereotype. Hopefully, my budding audience, you will be inspired. Ask a couple of questions about what is going on in your communities. What did you want to ask a question? Is there anybody in particular you want wants to ask it to? To me, okay, you can ask it to me if you like. Get a silly, you put her in or something. Okay, so we, are we, we talking about, you're talking about weed. So how do you think that weed, drugs, how do you think that that affects your sort of area where you live? Terrible. And I know a guy used to smoke weed and um, um what is it? I forgot now. But do you think do you think weed something that you'd like to smoke? Do you think that's a nice thing to do? No. Now, so would you what would you like to be when you grow up? A youth worker. A youth worker? Good choice, good answer. We like that answer. Okay. Is there any anything else? Any anybody else would like we've got the subject of weed being broached here by this um, youth worker in the making on the front row. Okay. So does, does anybody else have any opinions on kind of like cannabis? I know it's quite quite a hot topic. Any, any opinions at all? Do we like it? Do we not like it? Do we think there's too much of it? Not enough? But, but uh, anyone from our panel like to sort of give their opinion on this on this subject? Well, I well at the moment we're actually doing a cannabis um, play where it's um, linking into different pathways of where young people go from wh when it starts, how, how they sort of like link into young people and feed them into that pathway on a nice friendly part, you know, in the sense of uh, just go and drop that off for us and do things like that. And at the moment it's, it's quite an impact on the young people because they can see clearly how easy that crossroad is to, to move over. And so and we were talking, Paul, regarding the cannabis and the harvesting in the area, which is quite high at the moment as well. And obviously, Paul, you can give the statistics on that. I think in general terms, people think that cannabis is legal. So a lot of people use it because they think that it's legal and that the police won't take any action against them. So I think you just need to, you know, people need to consider the fact that it, it is illegal and the police need to take action for the reasons that Sharon's just discussed. Because overuse of any substance, be it alcohol, um, cannabis, or any other drug, uh, in any one community, can have that effect of, of upsetting the balance in the community, and then affecting it, and be it in terms of antisocial behaviour, or um, increases in crime and other um, other such things, in order to feed any particular habit that that may may start. I think Sharon will probably tell you from the work she's done that they start with a little spliff here and there. And then quite often that it develops and develops and develops and who knows where it goes on from there. So I think from the community point of view and from the policing, the community point of view, it's an important uh, 
topic for us to, as a community to, to deal with mm. and it's important for us to have agencies like Shadden to, to get involved with and I to I'd agree with that myself. Um, I think that um, cannabis, weed, skunk, whatever it wants to be called, it's quite underestimated um, within society the effect it actually has on young people. Has anybody got any opinions or anything like that about maybe some friends or anything that they've sort of like witnessed within their community, how they feel about it or how they feel it affects? The six year olds who come to the kids club they who are, are quite used to the smell of skunk when they go to shop and they come in and they go oh, it stinks of weed out there isn't it funny? It's wrong, we film the police all the time, but they're still there every day. That kids club's open at 4 o'clock and they're there all the time. And the kids, the six-year-old, thinking it's normal. And you, you try and explain to a six-year-old that it's not normal, they're going home and you smell it at home. You're trying to lose metal. No, I, 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 I totally agree. And I think for a, for a six-year-old to, to think that this... You know what it's called, you know, everything that's wrong for the six-year-old to know what it's about, to be honest. Exactly. I think when I was six, you know, I was more worried about which outfit Barbie was going to wear that day. That was high on the priority, not kind of like skunk or cannabis or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's spliff, you get a six-year-old coming in, that lad smoking a spliff at the shop and you think, how's a six-year-old know what that is? My, my child when she was six wouldn't have known that. Well, obviously now it's kind of like that become part of a normal society, but is that right? No. Is that right for me not to? I don't think it's right that, it, that that's normal in society. Are there any questions from the audience at this point? Yes? Um, I've got one for, if I can direct it to Janet. I'm just wondering if, um, Janet, can you know um, the council at the moment, what initiatives they've got and what their plans are to continue to um, invest in? the local police and also um, organisations like Sharon's youth organisation. I'm a councillor, that means I was elected, people went out and voted for me. Um, I've done six years here. On Wednesday night, where are we, Tuesday, tomorrow night the council's going to meet, there's going to be 90 councillors down at the town hall and they're going to be setting a budget for next year. They're going to be deciding what your council tax is going to be for each resident to pay in the house, from their house. And each house has a band, so if you go home and ask your parents what their council tax band is, they'll probably have forgotten and told from last year, um, and they'll think, oh my goodness, it's coming up again, we'll have to start again. We'll be told what it is in March, and we'll kick off again in April, paying each month for, for 10 months. It consists of several bits of money. We collect money for the police, which we pass on to the police. We collect it for Mersey Travel. They're the people who do the bus timetables and the bus shelters and uh, other things like the tunnels and the trains. The, the local authority spends money on the youth service. I have to say, and you won't like this, that providing a youth service is not what's called a statutory responsibility. Statutory means it's a law. There is no law that requires a local authority to provide a youth service. There is a law that requires you to organise the provision of a youth service. So we might have one officer for the whole of Liverpool, that's 450,000 people, which organises, helps to organise, helps other people to organise the Brownies, Sharon's gang down in, in Netherley, and every other youth provision that you can think of. As long as we've got one body down at the municipal building down in Dale Street, we are fulfilling our legal duty. And the problem at the moment is that most of our money as a council comes from central government. 80% of what we spend, that's four pounds out of every five, comes from central government. And they're cutting it, cutting it, and cutting it. I can be really boring about this for about three quarters of an hour. So when you've had enough, stick your hands up and say, rescue me. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Give me 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds. Are we going to spend it on looking after your elderly granny, or are we going to spend it on Sharon's youth and community provision in Netherly and other things like that? Something with the back there? Why do you know what we need to spend on kids who have left school and now we're not doing nothing, you know what I mean? Like tonight we've got nothing to do, we're walking the streets, yeah, we're getting stopped by police all the time because we're just walking the streets, there's nothing for us to do. There's no money being spent on us, it's all being spent on the younger kids and it's that, like, you know, we can't do nothing. Last year, we spent £30,000 on installing playing lights on the football cage in Belvale Park 
and we did it in response to a request from the young people who ranged from about 12 to 17 because that's what they wanted. £30,000 of our budget, our local budget, is about a third of it and it entirely went on that small group of people. We didn't spend much on older people and we didn't spend much on very young people. We did it because we asked people what they wanted. If you provide a youth club, and there is one up the road, it's generally called the Boise. It's in, in, what Lindeen, Road. in Lindeen Road, and it's called Childwell Youth and Community. We can provide stuff, and we do, but we can't require young people to go into them. You make choices. You were talking about choices. You were talking about choices. Young people choose to gather in the park. And the best we can do for them is to make sure they've got a kickabout, somewhere to sit and gab. And I know that they're there because I go in and pick up the litter the next morning. And that's my beef. Thank you. Do you think that arts and cultural activities can play a role in empowering communities and dealing with guns, guns and knife crimes positively? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I think the best person to answer that really is, is Martin, I think, because he's oh. probably got... Thanks, sir. Thank you. Um, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I'm the director of Valley Community Theatre and we're a youth arts uh, organisation and I think everything that we've, we've said tonight really strikes home with us working with young people. We're exceptionally uh, proud of the way that we always, we, we know what you like, um, so it goes against the mould, it goes against the stereotype that people put out about young people. We know what you like because we work with you. Um, you, you root for the community. You're looking out for other people all the time. I think what what we can do as a cultural organisation is address those maybe you know the norms and the values which aren't getting addressed in, at home or in society, and start to sort of um, teach really. So I think that the greatest way forward for us is is in education, and I think maybe what what we're not realising while we're we're actually enjoying ourselves, having a great time. We've also always got an edge to a slant to everything. Um, and I think once we start linking that to accreditation, we can really see young people excelling. So in a, from a youth's arts organisa organisational point of view, I think we've got a lot to teach about the uh, get by getting together and exploring in a cultural sense what is actually happening in our community. Um, I, I think it gives a voice, uh, it empowers young people. Um, you, 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 by being creative, it gives you an outlet. Um, the lads up at the top, I, I think, um, you know, feel for you with the bus stop, maybe Janet can sort something out and Riverside for you. But you're, you're more than welcome if you've got, you know, if you want a DJ, if you want to, um, use the recording studio, I can sort something out for that. Um, I think the frustrating thing is, as a youth arts organisation, is the ne there's never enough money, but I think when, you, when it comes down to there being so little money given out that you can't even keep a safe space, such as the theatre, a roof above your head, I think we're starting to move into very, very dangerous territory. Um, tell me if I'm going on. I, Janet thought she was going to be the worst, but I'm just starting to bore myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, was, that, was, that, was that a good answer for you? Did you like that answer? What was your name? Libby. Libby, I think Libby deserves a clap. Thank you. Okay, is there anything from any of our audience members that... I what the young boys at the back said, that they haven't got much to do and they walk in the street and they're trying to find activities to do and stuff like that how can the older community support them to find activities how, you know you yourself sit on the housing association board how can they support them because you guys are in positions where you can speak for them so what can you do to support them uh, it's very hard actually because also our funding's been cut and everything comes down to money and providing things. I mean, I'm involved with, the, with Belle Vale Park um, and we're trying to get a kid's shelter in there. And that's, we've been working on that for three years with Riverside's help. And it still hasn't come to fruition. And it's so frustrating when you're sitting there trying to get these things off the ground and there's no money. 
Okay. Um, I would like to thank everybody who's, who's come tonight. I'd like to thank everybody for listening, coming to my workshop and taking part. I'd like to thank everybody who's come from our panel tonight. I'd like to round of applause for our panel.